Hello, everyone. Today's lecture will consist of two parts. One, we're going to look at a game by Capablanca, going back to our discussion of the World Champions. And the second part will be a game played by my student, where he used very, very similar example, similar ideas. And I showed this game to my student about a year ago. So, uh, first things first, let's look at the Capablanca game. Uh, Capablanca was the third world champion, um, considered to be one of the best players of all time. And he's playing against Edgar Kale, who was a good player in his own right, uh, one of the top players in the world of his time. And it starts as the English C4 Knight F6. Uh, knight of three, c5. For now, it's a symmetrical English. Both knights come out, knight c3, knight c6. Nothing special here, d4. White gets the center. Um, black takes, white takes. Kale, playing against Cavablanca, decides to trade knights, which is not terrible. Takes, takes. But now white queen is pretty good in the middle. And black decides to put his bishop opposite of the queen. And Capablanca plays e4. And now what started as an English opening is going to become is going to become the Marozzi bind. We have control over the squares, which is usually which is usually something which happens from the Sicilian defense. And the point is white puts his pawns hand here, which makes it very, very hard for black to play to five, which is what he tries to play, which is what he usually tries to play. Okay, so what happened? Um, D6, nothing special. Black is getting ready to bring out his bishop. Um, Bishop e3, uh, developing a bishop. At some point, our queen might have to move. If it moves, it would have to move to g2. So, bishop g7, f3, white build, white continues to build his center. Eventually, we will have this very, very nice structure, which will make it very, very hard to challenge our center. So, Queen a5, um, the, queen, um, the queen comes out, and at some point this queen needs to head back. So it goes to g2. Maybe we will try to move our bishop here and trade for this bishop. Or maybe we also sometimes can play something like knight, knight e5. Okay, black plays a6, which is not terrible. At some point, he might play b5. Bishop e2, he ready to castle. Notice the bishop does not go to d3, where a lot of the time he's just blocked by the spawns. And uh, uh, right now, he's not very good. But the point is, we just need to do Bishop e6, black develops his bishop. Um, there might be more pressure on the spawn in a second. White plays rook c1, which makes perfect sense. At some point, white wants to play b3, at which point this bishop is going to become really good. So white takes his rook away from this diagonal and puts it somewhere where it might potentially support this pawn. And later on, if this pawn ever takes over here, the rook will have an open line. And this is a useful idea to remember. Because at first you look at this move and you wonder why is the rook here. Well, he asks himself, what potential breaks does black have? Well, d5 or b5. If the pawn ever takes in either direction, the rook will have an open line. So rook c1 makes sense. Rook c8, <clears throat> pressuring the pawn. And Capablanca simply finishes his Marozzi bind structure. Okay. We have more space. Uh, the question is, what do we do next while we have the space? 
Um, Blackface 97. 97 looks like a weird move, but there is logic behind it. Sure, the knight from here was not really influencing anything in the center. Uh, second, uh, this bishop now plays chess, and this knight is going to head to c5, which is actually a pretty nice outpost because white doesn't have a pawn here. It's going to be a bit difficult to get rid of this knight. Um, Cavablanca castles and black castles. Another very common idea which you see in a lot of Sicilians, Sicilians knight g5, which of course attacks the queen, but there is a second point. It also hits the pawn, and black cannot trade queens because white will throw in this check. So, here, and this rook is going to fall. Um, well, first we, well, it's actually, sorry, it's not going to fall. The king will move, will move, and then we'll take here. The rook will survive. I misspoke. But we still win a pawn, and this pawn is weak. So, this is why, after knight d5, the queen drops back. Okay, white has this very nice position, but again, what do you do next? So, what does Capablanca do? Well, he plays queen b4. He's pressuring the spawn for now. Um, Blank gets a little bit annoyed by this knight, and this is a pretty good knight. So he takes. And white can take back either way. He just takes with the spawn. Now we have more space, uh, and we have some pressure over here. Okay, black trades rooks. Takes, takes. And now he plays queen b8, which is a nice move because uh, we add black is defending the spawn. And black is getting ready to bring his rook to c8 to try to trade rooks. Um, okay. Uh, Capablanca uh, plays queen c4, which is a very, very nice move. Because he realizes this is the only open line on the board. Uh, we cannot let black come here. And then maybe we're going to show up over here and take control of the seventh, of the seventh round. So queen c4 is a good move. Black throws in bishop b2, which I don't know what it does. White, of course, takes the bishop. And the bishop goes back. So it's not clear what Kale accomplished with this exactly. And now very nice move by Capablanca f4. Because one piece which is not doing too much is this bishop. So his plan is to bring his bishop over here where he will have a lot more influence over what's going on. Um, rook d8. And Capablanca, just, Capablanca now plays queen c7. And the logic is, well, if black takes, this rook will come here. Otherwise, white might take and bring his rook. So black decides not to trade. <clears throat> He says your queen is here, but it doesn't really matter if you cannot make progress. But now the bishop comes. Bishop g4. Hitting this knight, hitting this knight twice, and this is getting very, very uncomfortable. Um, black plays knight c5, giving up, giving up a pawn, because we can take here a lot. Um, but Black is hoping that he will have enough compensation because then we have opposite color bishops and maybe black can survive. So Capablanca, very, very, very interestingly, does not take this knight. Instead, he plays e5. Okay, what's the point when we attack into the bishop, but also this pawn defends this knight. If it takes, that's the knight. So after this move, the bishop has to move. So bishop g7. But now that pawn is free. Capablanca is up a pawn. This pawn is about to fall. Um, Black tries to play, uh, to play actively. Pawn h5, asking the bishop, the bishop a question, and the, I will just drop this. Bishop. Yeah, but Capablanca realizes 
he's close to victory, so he plays e6 right away, uh, sacrificing his bishop. So why did he do that? Well, let's see. Um, black takes the bishop. And Blanca takes, takes with check. Now, the king moved to h to h7. If the king to, goes to h8, might has a very simple move. Pause and let me know what it is. And the move is queen h4, after which it's game over. So this is why black has to play king h7 instead, because now at least he can block with the bishop, which is what happened. Queen h4, bishop h6. And now I find more pressure here. And there is no way out. Black blocks with the pawn. Cover Blanca takes. There is a pin. There is a pin on this bishop. The king tries to run away. But after this move, he resigns because um let's say takes. Now there are many winning moves. Uh, the easiest one, uh, what is the easiest one? This should be good, this should be good. Which one is better? Um, this one is probably, is probably best. Yeah, check. He has to go here, check. And that's game over. Okay, everything done with checks. If you can get what you want with checks, um, it's the most forcing way, it's the easiest to calculate, and this is what you should do. Um, so, I showed this game to Mark a few, well, actually more than a year ago. Um, and he remembered a lot of these ideas um, and used them in his own game. So let's take a look at this game. This is the game which he played uh, on um, Saturday. Uh, two days ago. Um, and uh, the reason why I'm doing this is I want to demonstrate that it's quite useful to learn from the games by top players because you get to learn how they think and how they use certain ideas. I've shown some of Mark's games before. Um, in this game, he's rated in the mid 1900s. He's playing in someone rated in the mid 1700s, and we have the same opening. Um, it starts a little bit differently. It starts as a Sicilian, but we're going to get to the Marozzi bind very quickly. So, c6, d4. Might has those same two pawns controlling on the square, making it very hard for black to break through. Bishop d7, putting pressure on the knight. Bishop e3, supporting the knight. Knight f6, now f3, building the pawn chain, d6, allowing for the bishop to come out, knight c3, bishop d7, which is not the greatest bishop in the world, but black wants to give uh, his rook or possibly his queen this line. Rook c1, same idea that we saw previously. White wants to play b3 at some point. And there will be a very good bishop here. Castle by black. Bishop e2 again. We play bishop e2. Not bishop d3. Because we do not want to block the queen. Black trades. Which is okay. He has less space. So trading is not bad. Bishop takes. Bishop c6. This is not the greatest bishop in the world. It just points at these three pawns. Queen d2. Similar to the Capablanca game, the queen rises up, um, supporting all kinds of squares. A5. Black needs to do something, and he's trying to cause a little bit of trouble on the queen side. Mark castles. Knight d7, same idea that we saw in the Capablanca game. The knight might head over here, and also this bishop opens up. Um, and the same idea again. This is why it's so useful to look at games by top people. Knight d5, this is a very good knight. If black ever takes, we can take back. We can also take back this way, which is fine. But the idea is we take this way and we have a nice rook. 
Okay. Um, takes, takes. Similar to the Capablanca game, we have a rook over here. Black trades. The downside for black is now his king is a little bit open because he pan caroed, and now the bishop is gone. So there are a lot of these open squares. Knight c5. Black and white um, play on the c file. Mark tries to double up, and eventually he will try to dislodge this knight and cause trouble over here. Black brings his queen into the game. Mark continues with his plan. Black tries to challenge the line. And now f4. Why f4? Well, if you remember the Capablanca game, this bishop is about to come here and become a very strong bishop. Again, this is why it's so useful to look at certain games. Also, higher level stuff, if um, you're trying to learn an opening, it's a good idea to look at some of the games played by top players in those opening to see some of the ideas used, because maybe you will be able to use those ideas yourself. The queen goes back. It's not entirely clear why um, it goes back, but that's okay. Mark continues with his plan, bishop, bishop g4. Um, the rook gets a little bit worried about going here because maybe he was concerned that Mark at some point will get before him and then bad things would happen to the rook. And now e5. If you remember the Capablanca game, same idea. We're trying to undermine the defender of this knight. Okay, h5. Mark drops back. b5. It's not clear how far this pawns can get, but it's also not easy to suggest a better plan for black. And Mark plays f5, which is a very creative move. Uh, to just try to read open the king's position. Um, black keeps everything closed. Taken would be very, very scary. And obviously, taken here would just drop the knight. So black plays g5. And Mark tries to go all out to open up everything. And one of the points that he's trying to do, by the way, he's trying to undermine this knight. Um, so his plan is to take here, take here, and then this will be free. Uh, in the meantime, his bishop gets trapped, but Mark calculated that this is okay. Um, uh, he can try, he can try to take here right away, which is swing. Uh, Mark decides to play a different way though. Um, Mark continues with his plan, takes attacking the queen. The queen moves because he realized that if he took uh, this would fall. So he's hoping that this knight will survive and he will be able to destroy this bishop. But Mark still continues with his plan. Black saves the knight, but this allows for the rook to come in. And after the queen takes, Mark now sacrifices. And there is a point. This pawn is on the seventh. If this pawn queens, well, uh, my will might will win. So black takes, mark takes, check, and queen blocks, and now rook c8, and we have action over here. Um if the king moves, might will have more queens. Well he'll trade queens first, then he'll make more queens. <clears throat> so black trades, but that doesn't help. And now Mark has the queens. He just needs to get out of checks. Black checks, black checks, and he has maybe one more check. He should probably throw this in just to see if Mark goes wrong, but instead Black chose to resign. Um, okay, um, uh, again, a few lessons, uh, general lessons from today is in order to become good, you have to play games. But you also have to learn certain things. Once you get to a certain level, it's useful to learn certain opening ideas. It's useful to uh, look at games by top players, uh, the games in your opening to see 
how they played it and to see if you can learn anything from them. Uh, Mark did that. He did a very good job remembering uh, the lessons of Capablanca, and we got this quick, nice game as a result. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll be back soon. Thank you.